what is the problem? The problem is money. Imali Ias Luisa March. Money has come in between us. And today there is patronage, there is money that is being passed around in bags and paper bags, the brown envelope has become a big thing in our movement today. As we are leading to the conference, money has started being the currency of buying favor and votes. That is already happening. In many parts of our, of our country, the interests of the people have been rendered subordinate to the interests of the few as they jostle for positions of authority and access to resources. This comrades, this challenge has been identified. Cyril is 100% is part of the problem, 100%, and everyone knows it. He pretends to be a reformer. He managed to get a whole lot of business people to back him last time round with the threat of the RET group, you know, and they were conned into backing him. They're not gonna back, most of them are not gonna back him again. This time. Money or leadership? Jacob Zuma claims that in South African politics today, it's money that decides who holds power. This is why the Umkondo Isizwe party has chosen to break away from the elective conference model. They believe it's time for a new way to choose leaders. Let's find out why. Greetings everyone. Welcome back to Inkari. It's time. Today we're diving into Jacob Zuma's explosive claim that party elective conferences in South Africa are not won by leaders. They are bought by those with deep pockets. Zuma argues that this system allows wealthy individuals, including those tied to what he calls white monopoly capital, to fund the candidates and so he outcomes. As a result, the MKP has chosen not to participate in an elective conference. Instead, they will go the consultative route. But why is this decision so important for the future of South African politics? I think because of the, the question why this organization is not going to have conferences for all the political parties. Firstly, I have not understood conferences. But at the moment, I understand and we agree with our leaders and members that we will meet, not conferences of elections. In what is called consultative conference, where we will be consulting about our work and looking at whatever we've done, we do well, what are the shortcomings, etc. And then take decisions, what then is the next. So consultative, yes, as we always meet, we'll also have that uh, our provinces come where we are all together to discuss where the organization is, what next we need to do to better our activities, etc., etc., etc. I have not seen <clears throat> these days in particular anything that is better in our conference that we've been having. And we've asked the question, what is it that is more important for us to have conference, what they call, what are they called? Elective, elective conference. Why must we keep on electing? We call it democracy. 
But I'm sure all of you know that today those who win are those who have the money. Is that consulted? Is that uh, huh? democracy? You know that there are presidents who are president today because they had all the money. Yeah. But they can't do the presidency or do anything that is presidential. <laughs> no, that's true. It has become a business, not even a, a, a proper business, <laughs> corrupt business, where people take money, yeah. pay to elect so and so. One of the things that uh, those who are behind those who have money have done, if you get elected, they think you are not doing what they want. They then give money to your comrades without you knowing that pay people to pass them, to, to be able to have so and so become a leader. So we have leaders who are not the leaders of the membership, but the leaders that have been elected by bought people with money. This, I don't think there is any democracy that we are talking about. And we know it because we have suffered, we, maybe many of you have not, but some of us have as political parties. There are people who are leading who are not supposed, who don't, who are not meant to be leaders. They are actually, they don't even know how to lead. But because of the money, they are. I just wanted to clarify this, you should know. It's a well thought out decision. We want, in the first instance, I don't understand why if there is a leader who is leading very well, doing everything, he must be taken out. You bring somebody who is directed from somewhere, even outside of the country. I don't think we should be so blind you know, to see that. It's a simple thing. Agreed? Journalist agreed? <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's start by understanding Zuma's core argument. According to him, elective conferences in South Africa are dominated by money not by the people's will. He claims that candidates with the backing of wealthy business leaders are able to secure votes and rise to power, regardless of their leadership capacity. Zuma points to the election of Cyril Ramaphosa as ANC president, alleging that it wasn't based on merit or grassroots support, but on financial backing. Zuma's argument doesn't stand alone. Prominent ANC figures and even members of the business sector have spoken out about the role of money in these internal elections. In Zuma's view, this undermines true democracy where leadership should be about community service, not about who can raise the most funds. This is an ANC that we can know whose outcomes and leadership were determined by money in 2017 there's no doubt about that so money bought this ANC money got this leadership where it is and all of those who joined it but capital funding Cyril Ramaphosa brought the ANC where it is there's no doubt about that and that has ideological implications about the nature and character of the ANC and what it can do for society and what it can do for society has to be aligned with those who funded its trip to this point, this political precipice. And I think from here onwards, we're going to see another selling. We're going to see another 30 years of those who want, who benefit from this system trying to maintain it. Several prominent figures from both the ANC and the business sectors have confirmed that money plays a significant role in influencing the outcome of elective conferences. This supports Zuma's claims. 
Can all these voices be wrong? Watch the following clips and decide for yourself. When Cyril got elected CR17, he lost the election, but at the very last minute, with funding organized by Stephen Kossif from a lot of good South Africans, allowed Cyril to bribe David Mabuza to cross the floor and win. Okay? So 55% of the people there voted for Cyril, but 45% didn't and don't like him and never did. It's what's most embarrassing about this is that so much money is being used for people to become presidents. I understand it's 400 million or something around that figure. You know, people must know that the old saying that who pays the piper uh, calls the tune. Calls the tune. You know, there's white monopoly capital people that are always talked about. If it's them who gave the president this money, it was with the expectation that they would call the tune. If the Guptas paid, gave the equity to, to, to Zane Zuma in their companies and did all the other favors to the Zuma family, it is because they were expecting to call the tune, and, and we know they did. If people who, if people who sell contraband cigarettes assist a Malema with his tax problems or, or registration of his party, it is because they expect at a certain time they will call the tune, he'll come to their defense. So drug lords pay police monies so that they can call the tune. I am very perturbed, A, that so much money is paid for ANC people to become leaders. For Christ's sake, you have 4,000, 4,500, 5,000 people that you want delegates, that you appeal to, to give you their votes. Why so much money? Who gets this money to do what in order that you become president? Whether it is Cyril Ramaphosa or Nkoso Zanazuma, I don't know how much was given to her. And I'm not saying they must go and investigate and so on. It just destroys the ANC even more. The fact of so much money being paid to ANC leaders to attain that high position is very worrying because those who pay the, 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 the pipers here are going to expect something. Currently, it's being led by President Ramaphosa and I've also seen that uh, there, are nom there are nominations for him. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think he does seem to be leading. Uh, I know it's not final. I hope it's not uh, from financial inducement. That's another no. thing I want to... Oh, no, it's, it's, okay. uh, actually, it's not financial inducement? Yes. What, what is that supposed to mean, I Minister? hope that these are not people who are given money to vote in a particular way. That is something that in this particular conference that we're going to, we need to take a resolution on. How do we fund people who are standing? You know, Tokyo once said, and I repeated this, and he repeated it himself, that the 2017 co election was bought. We can't, having, having fought all these years, all these people who have died for liberated South Africa, have been in a situation where a conference is bought. It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. There are other ways in which we can do it that do not involve money. The money that is being used to pay for people or buy people or whatever it is that it is used for could be used to build more houses. It could be used to improve our infrastructure. Mrs. Sula, I need to understand you yeah. very well. Are you saying those supporting the president are using money for him to be elected? No. I am saying we've got to stop the use of money. And I am saying Tokyo Sikhwale is on record saying that the person who won finally the 2017 election was won on money. So, so the, and person the person who has yeah. a bigger purse yeah. has a bigger opportunity of ascending. It's no longer about the values of the ANC, it is about how much money people have to ensure that their name appears on the ballot and that they succeed. That's wrong. So are you saying President Ramaphosa won on money last time I by using money? I am saying Tokyo Sikhwale is on record saying that. What are, you, what, what are you saying yourself? I'm saying if that is the view, then we've got to stop it. We are a moral organization, we're not about buying people, we're not about paying people, and if that is the way, then we should stop it. And I know of countries that have gone a different route of electing presidents than the route that we, we, we are... Uh... When we talk about private money, 
where private companies come and they buy a conference of the ANC. Yeah. You see, because the private people became very clever. If the ANC splits or Terra can go, I dries up. Uh, this one goes and dries up. PAC came out, it dries up. The number of people have broken up, the ANC dries up. So, yeah. what is the best way? Buy. Buy the ANC. It was a shocker. Nasdaq was a shocker. Yeah. Where money was used to buy a conference. Also suggests Ramaphosa had possibly committed a money laundering offence. The South African president says he knew about the donations, but this knowledge was limited. I knew that, you know, money was being raised. And as we explain in our documents, I even went to the uh, fundraising dinners and spoke at fundraising dinners and told them the vision. The one person phoned me and said, I've won 40 delegates, give me 100,000 rand. Mm. And I tell him that if I had 100,000 rand, I would go to an auction and buy sheep or cattle. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't give it to you. Not a buffalo, you wouldn't buy a buffalo. I won't, I won't, buy, I won't <laughs> buy a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my wife for wild animals. Yeah. Yeah. So, but definitely the issue of money, you've seen it. I mean, even it's also with, it, how are you going to deal with it? Because also Cyril Ramaphosa's campaign has been accused of running a multi-million campaign. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he scaled down this year. Last time he was in trouble mm. about that. But today it was more complex because it was widespread. For example, there was a man who was campaigning for a treasurer general. Mm. He worked in the office of the president. We raised our concern. This person is in your office. He's going around buying votes. Mm -hmm. Please deal with that issue. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, he's not elected treasurer general of the ANC. But uh, if you go around displaying money, it's the worst way of dealing with things. Mm -hmm. Then you spoil these delegates. When they talk to you, you don't give them money. Mm -hmm. They think that you are sick. Yeah. I, I mean, I was concerned when I saw some delegates even crying and I wondered, are they crying because they lost money yeah. or are they crying because they genuinely believed in their... So, what does the MKP propose as an alternative? Given their belief that elective conferences have become too compromised by money, Jacob Zuma and the MKP have decided to reject this process altogether. Instead, they are turning to a consultative conference. What's the difference? In a consultative conference, leaders aren't elected through campaigns fueled by big money. Instead, party members engage in discussions and consensus building to decide who should lead. Zuma believes this approach is more in line with the values of Umkondo Sizwe, the ANC's former military wing. It prioritizes leadership by capability and consensus, not wealth. In its view, this is a way to ensure that the people who truly represent the party's values rise to leadership, rather than those who simply have the financial resources to campaign. Zuma's argument raises larger questions about the role of money in South African politics. Is democracy being undermined when elective conferences are dominated by financial power. He argues that true leaders, those who serve their communities, are often overlooked because they can't compete with the financial resources of their opponents. As citizens, we need to ask, is the current system really democratic if those with money have the upper hand? Zuma and the MKP are pushing for change but can consultative conferences truly ensure fairness and transparency? Or will they face their own challenges? This decision to reject elective conferences is just one part of a bigger struggle for how South Africa's political future will be shaped. So, where do we go from here? Jacob Zuma's critique of elective conferences is a powerful reminder that money plays a major role in who gets to lead, not just in South Africa, but around the world. The MKP's decision to pursue a consultative conference reflects their desire for a more equitable, transparent process. But will this model catch on in South African political landscape, or will money continue to dominate? 
it seems as though he knew some of the runnings of the campaign. Can you take us through what the nature of that evidence is that, that brought you to those conclusions? Uh, that relates then to the um, the monies which were paid into these accounts because the money from Busasa was paid into EFG2. So now the EFG2 account was used to then transfer all the monies out to either Riatenda trust account or to the um, this linked uh, environment uh, account. Now the evidence we have uh, before even... Um, requesting him to provide additional evidence because the, he was saying he, he he said I don't want to know what's happening mm. and even the the, the campaigns uh, team was saying we were not going to disclose anything mm. Mm. but strangely he attended the the, the, the dinners he, uh, he, right. he addressed the donors so they are um, there's correspondence email okay from the campaigns managers to him about uh, the monies which uh, needs to be transferred to the CR uh, Sir Ramaphosa That's Foundation. So there's correspondence actually linking the money flow with the, presi well, the deputy president at the times? Nali. Now he was now a president. Oh, he, uh, by then? He, yes, some of the transactions happened after okay. he was the president. Because mm. uh, it started, some started in 2016 December, others started January 2017, mm. uh, well to February 2018. In fact, um, I'm not sure whether he was now the president, but then the movement of monies mm. happened t between 2016 December and um, February 20. Some of the accounts February mm. 2019, but also right. there is information where they were saying to him. Can you approach so and so, you know, um, mm. for donations and right? Yeah. What do you think? Should South Africa's political parties move away from elective conferences to avoid the influence of money, or is there a better solution? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Inka Ari. It's time for more deep dives into South Africa's political landscape. Until next time, it's time to make your voice heard. Thanks for watching. Take care.